Good morning, ladybugs. I hope you're having a good morning so far. Today's artist is an artist called Henry Matisse. And he was a wonderful painter, but he also did a lot of other things like cutting, cutting shapes and things like that. So we are going to, we're going to focus on that for our art project. But first I thought I'd read you a little bit about him and then, and then I will um, read you the book that, that I was going to read you that I really like. It's called Henry Scissors by Jeanette Winter. But first, let's just read a little bit about Henry Matisse, okay? Let's see, let's go on the first page here. He was a, a very important paper, and he wanted his art to give people pleasure. So he wanted people to look at his paintings and things and, and, uh, and just make them feel good. Because that's what our art does, right? When we create something that we really like, we feel good about it. We want to hang it up and look at it and show it to people. Just like Miss Carla and I hang all your art on our boards and that way everybody can see what you made and you can see what everybody else made. So in the beginning, when he was young, he made lots of great paintings. I love this one of the fish in the bowl. And this one is, uh, this looks like it's a collection of his paints and things like that, maybe in a window. That's a really cool painting. He liked to paint people too. He painted this woman right here sitting. And he liked to paint flowers and patterns. And we were talking about that yesterday when I read that book about floral patterns that have uh, flowers on them. So do you see that chair? That chair has a lot of flowers on it. So his parents owned a store and his dad wanted him to work in the store, but he didn't really want to work in a store. They sold all sorts of things like um, just a general store, seeds, grain, household goods, and he didn't think he really even liked art, but he had, um, he got sick for a while. He had appendicitis and when he was in bed, he was kind of bored. And so that's when he kind of discovered art. And here is a funny picture of him saying, Yahoo, I am no longer bored. I am happy. Sometimes it's good to be a little bit bored because then um, you start to think of something to do. You walk around, you look around outside, and you look at your stuff and go, maybe I'll do this. So sometimes it's good to be a little bit bored. So he painted and painted all sorts of different pictures. Um, remember I was saying with some of the artists like Roy Lichtenstein and... Um, some of the other ones, they, they, um, they went to art school and they were kind of expected to paint landscape pictures like this, which, which are great pictures, more formal pictures of people. But some of these artists, they could do it and they, they did that kind of painting for a while, but then they decided that they wanted to do something different, like Roy Lichtenstein. He wanted to put a big word in his picture. And um, who else? Uh, uh, Pete Mondrin, he wanted to do the squares of color and things like that. So I think, I think this is probably good. Oh, this is another picture I wanted to show you. And it's, um, it's a beautiful picture of a lady. And look at all the, look at all the beautiful colors in that. He loved, he loved colors just like I do. Okay, and so that, now I'm gonna read you the book that I was gonna read you, but that, that just gave you a little bit of background. This is more of a story. It's called Henry Scissors. And I'm gonna have to 
my kitty cat wants to get into some treats over there. I'm trying to get him away so he doesn't make a lot of noise. It says Matisse. Well, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna get up and get my kitty cat out of the picture here. So that he doesn't bother anybody. Alright, I am I am back. Hopefully that made him go to bed or go to sleep. Henry Scissors. It says Matisse got as close as one can get to heaven with a pair of scissors. Henry Scissors. In a small weaving town in France, a young boy named Henry Emile Benoit Matisse watched his mother paint China. Oh, and that would be a fun thing too. He wanted to paint too. So for, for painting plates and things like that, you have to use a special kind of paint um, because it's a shiny surface and it doesn't stick very well. And also it has to be the kind of paint that you can eat off if you want to, if you want to use that to eat off after you paint. He drew pictures in the sand. Oh, and when we're at school, ladybugs, we draw pictures in the sand or maybe letters in our name and that's a lot of fun. Or we get the trucks and we make big roads or mountains. He drew pictures in his school books. Just like you like guys like to make lots of pictures in the morning. When Henry was a young man, he drew pictures in his law books and on contracts, deeds and wills. So he went to a special school to become a lawyer. And those books did not have a lot of pictures in them, but he, he drew pictures on them. Henry was sick in bed with appendicitis, appendicitis one winter. His mother gave him a box of paints, and he painted until he was well. Oh, do you remember the story I read this week about uh, the noisy paint box where his aunt gave him a pair of a box of paints? See what a box of paints can do? He kept on painting. He forgot about law. He left his small town to become an artist in Paris. And Paris is in France. So a lot of artists come from France. Henry painted pictures day after day and year after year. He was happy and his paintings made people happy. But when Matisse was an old man, he fell ill. So ill, he couldn't paint anymore. He couldn't even sit up. He could only lie in bed and go to sleep. He paint, his paintings floated in his dreams. Matisse finally opened his eyes and they were filled with sadness. Now he must remain in bed or use a wheelchair. So he couldn't really walk anymore. Would he ever have the energy to paint again? So he couldn't, he couldn't stand up very well. When Matisse was strong enough to travel, he went to the ocean. The sea air might help him get well. Before later, he, before long, he sat up. A little later, he started drawing. So he got a little bit of his energy back. Then one day, Matisse picked up a pair of scissors, just like this. He cut, started cutting out shapes from painted paper. He was drawing with scissors. A pair of scissors is a wonderful instrument. And there he is. He's kind of like in a wheelchair, but he's cutting out shapes with his scissors. Matisse cut paper all day. My pleasure is cutting things out. My, my pleasure in cutting things out grows even greater. Why didn't I think of this earlier? 
his assistants painted paper for him all day. So back then, it was a long time ago, we didn't have the colored paper like we do now. So they had to paint the paper and then let it dry and then he would cut it out, which is kind of a lot more work than, than we have to do because we just get to get the colored paper. It seems to me that I am in a second life. So even though he couldn't paint the way he used to, he found another, another way to express his art. Paper cutouts covered his walls. Do you see all those beautiful cutouts? One evening, Matisse lay in bed and he drew the faces of his grandchildren on the ceiling with a piece of chalk tied to a long pole. So I'm gonna hold this really close, see if you can see it. But since he couldn't climb on a ladder, pretend like this finger is a piece of chalk and he drew on the ceilings. It was a very long pole. That's actually kind of hard to do because the poles are heavy. But he was able to draw the faces of his grandkids. When he fell asleep, they looked down on him and saw his dreams. They saw the shapes that surrounded him in his dreams. As time went on, Matisse cut bigger and bigger shapes that filled his seaside room with color. You see, as I am obliged to remain often in bed, I have made a little garden all around me where I can walk. There are leaves, fruits, a bird. And so his assistants, they're on the ladder, hanging things up, just like you see Miss Carla and I on the ladder sometimes. Way, way up, hanging all your Beautiful artwork up, artwork up on the board. I am deeply contented and happy. Look at all those beautiful shapes he cut out out of the colored paper. To me, they look like leaves, but to you, they could look like something else. But he did say garden. It kind of reminded him of garden, so perhaps they are leaves. Then one night, Matisse walked out into the paper garden, and his rainbow of shapes cradled the old artist and carried him into the heavens. So he is no longer alive because that was a long time ago. But all his cutting and shapes made him very happy. Are some of the stars we see at night coming to us from Henry's scissors? Maybe. And there's the stars. He liked to cut stars too. And if you look at his stars, are they all the same? No, they're all kind of different. They're not perfect. Okay, I hope you enjoyed Henry Scissors, and then let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today, okay? So, um, Henry, Henry Matisse liked, he liked patterns too. When I read that book yesterday, Daisy Got Dressed, remember we, we learned all about patterns, okay? And now we're going to kind of we're going to kind of cut out some of those patterns. So here's the name of our artist, Henry Matisse. I think my cat likes this one. He was very interested when I was cutting everything. And here are some of the shapes that you might see that he cut out in his paintings. He cut stars, he cut squares and rectangles. He cut swirls. Remember we looked at the swirls yesterday? on Daisy's, um, I'm not sure, I can't remember what she was wearing when we saw the swirls, but they were on there. And we said it kind of looks like a snail. And there's another artist that Miss Carla does that also has a lot of swirls in it. Uh, he liked zigzag shapes and wavy shapes. <laughs> um, and so, uh, let's see. What I did is I just got some of my colored paper and I'm trying to be really careful with it because this is all I have and I'm gonna make it last, okay? So I started cutting out my shapes here and I think you can see that. I did different colored paper, green, black, pink, and then I just started gluing my shapes on the paper. And what I love about this project is uh, some of the shapes 
I use, like for this one, I just use the scraps of some of the stuff that I cut there. So they can be any kind of shape you want. In fact, I'll show you, I'll show you some of my scraps that the kitty was very interested in. Um, he really liked, well, he really liked the spiral because kitties like, kitties like things that kind of move a little bit, kind of, they like to, they like to play. <laughs> yeah, they like to play with things like that, don't you? He liked, he liked the waves. He liked the zigzags. I'll just let him have that. I'll let him have that one. He liked this one here. So I could even make a new picture with all my scraps here. That would be fun, right? And I just cut them out with my scissors and then I glued. And again, you're going to see all sorts of shapes and stars. It doesn't really matter which way you glue them. Um, you can just glue them on the way you want to, okay, and make something really unique. And some of the shapes when I was cutting out reminded me of things like um, one of the shapes reminded me, well, this kind of reminds me of lightning. Or one of the shapes kind of reminded me of a ghost. Oh, this one here. Or a moon. Or a crown. This kind of reminded me of a worm. Or the letter M. Kind of a cloud or a flower. And we see that we see the shapes like we have talked about with our three-dimensional shapes. We see we see sometimes in his art, we see the pyramid shape and the cone and the cube and the rectangular prism. Although this isn't a very long one. I'm not quite sure if this is what I think it is. I'm try still trying to look it up. The sphere. You don't see a lot of round shapes in his art, but you kind of see it in that one and the hemisphere. So you can take all of those shapes that we've been learning about, the three-dimensional shapes, and you can cut them out and put them in your artwork. Um, and then I also thought about these shapes here that, we, that I was showing you that we use when we take geometry. Um, you can cut out these kind of shapes. He certainly has like more triangles and squares in there. Um, and I learned something, I learned something new because uh, this, when I bought it, I think it was called, like I said, an amoeba. And so I looked it up. Well, it means two different things, okay? If, you, if you're thinking about science, if you're talking about amoebas with science, you were talking about a cell inside your body that you'd have to look at with the microscope. And it has no definite shape, so it can be, it can be like, it can be like one of these shapes here. It just kind of doesn't have a shape. If an amoeba wants to move, if the little cell wants to move in your body, it just like puts its arm out, and then it kind of flows that way. So it's it's kind of a kind of a flowy shape. It's really cool. Um, and then in, in math, it means it means a whole other thing. Um, actually, I did find a really cute poem on a site called SplashLearn.com. And this is how it goes. 3D shapes are fat, not flat. Find a cone in a birthday hat. Oh, maybe I should put it on my kitty's head. No, he doesn't. You can tell by his ears he doesn't like that. You see a sphere in a basketball and a cuboid in a building so tall. So that's what I feel like this might be a cuboid because that does look like a, a building, right? You see a cube in the dice you roll, right? This looks like a big, I could put dots on this and make it a, a dice. And a cylinder, oh, where's my cylinder? You know what, I think my kitty cat, 
I think he took that cylinder. I'm going to have to find it. You see a cylinder in a shiny flagpole. Very good. And they didn't talk about the pyramid. But, oh, I think the kitty cat took my cylinder. Okay, so ladybugs, I hope you have, have fun with this. Um, the other thing I was going to say is uh, Henry Matisse, he was just like um, Lichtenstein and Kandinsky and Pete Mondrian. He liked color, and that's another reason why I like this artist. But you see, he liked he liked to see how color looked on different colors. So you can kind of play around with that. How does the blue look on the pink paper? How does the green look on the pink paper? How does yellow look on blue and black paper? And how does red look when it's next to green paper? Well, that's what I was going to say. Sorry, I forgot. So this is an amoeba in science. Remember I talked about the cell? And then when I looked up amoeba, and for math, it said that the amoeba shape looked like this. Kind of like that thing down there in the corner. So do you see that when you're learning about math and science, it all goes back to art too. And when you're looking at art, you're also learning about math and science. Oh, and then I actually, you can do this, you can do this on just plain white paper with uh, your oil pastels or markers or crayons. I just did, instead of cutting, I did another one where I just drew the shapes. I put an arrow in there because I saw that in one of the books. And waves and stars, this kind of looks like a starfish, doesn't it? So the shapes can be whatever you want them to be. Well, I hope you have fun with this project. Again, just like Miss Carla was saying, I thought her project yesterday was so cool with, um, you know, melting your little plastic cup or uh, bowl. Um, that, that was such a really fun project, but we can't wait to see next week. Definitely, we want to see what projects you've been doing and how much fun um, you've been having. And we, you could actually, maybe you can, there's a place in your house where you can put a bunch of them on the wall and you can make your own art gallery. Wouldn't that be fun? I think that'd be great. Okay, I hope you had fun. And I'm going to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. So I'm going to try to do a fun Friday um, activity um, outside. I'm going to try to build a fort outside. I know a lot of you like to build a fort inside with pillows and blankets. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to build a fort outside with things that I find out in my yard. Okay. All right. I will see you later. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn off my video. I'm going to go this way to turn it off. Bye-bye, ladybugs.